Today we're going to talk about how to hold your masculine frame with women. Now, if you don't know who I am, uh, basically, my name is Limo. I'm the founder of Higher Self Circle. I've been helping hundreds of guys to skyrocket their dating lives using the proper systems. And yeah, through my systems, I've helped thousands of, of men to really transform their dating life and get the right results, either getting multiple dates a week or a month or attracting an amazing girlfriend, wife, partner. Uh, that's basically what I do. So let's dive in. Let's get into the content. So number one, what is your frame? Well, first of all, your frame has different meanings. Like on a macro level, your frame is your perception of the world, your perception of yourself, your paradigm, your beliefs, your values. Your frame is a set of attitudes and 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 values and beliefs you have towards the world. And it's a perception also, it's a paradigm. Now on a micro level, your frame is how you control the meaning of your interactions with people. So for example, when you're on a sales call or on a sales meeting, you can control the frame of how that meeting is gonna go. You can set a certain frame. Same thing with women, when you talk to them, you can have a certain frame. You can control the meaning of how the conversation uh, looks like. For example, you can talk to a woman in a friendly way and in a very platonic way, and then you're going to set the frame that the conversation is pretty platonic and friendly, or you can be a bit more flirty and show more intent and be a bit more sexual. And so then you're, you're going to set the frame that you're a sexual guy, you're a potential sexual partner, and that's going to be a lot better if you want to get her uh, into bed or if you want to sleep with her. So your frame is super important. Now, your frame is not only about having this quick conversation with women, it's also how you view women in general, how you understand women in general, because your understanding of psychology and, and especially the female psychology is going to also strengthen your frame with them. I truly believe that if you want to have a strong frame, you also need to have a strong understanding of female psychology. And I'm talking about a strong frame with women. Now, the frame you set in the beginning of a relationship is going to establish the tone for the whole future of the relationship with her. So the frame you set in the beginning of a relationship with a woman is going to set the tone for the rest of the relationship. So that's why it's very, very important to set the right frames from the beginning. When you start a relationship, set the right frames, set the right expectations, have the right boundaries so that she can know what to expect. All right. Now, in any situation, especially when it comes to a man to woman situation, one is either in his frame or forced into another's. One is either at the cause or at the effect of the other. And in every relationship, there's always a person who's more dominant than the other person. There's always a person who has the stronger frame. And you have to be that person as the man. Now, are you the one she looks up to? Or are you the one that she basically can play with? And she's she knows that she can control you, right? Is your frame weak? Can she do whatever she wants or have you set some boundaries so that she knows her role, she knows what she's doing, she's not going to cross any of your boundaries and there's this mutual respect in the relationship and she truly, truly follows your leadership. Now society, especially nowadays in the West, will try to brainwash you and will try to make you feel like you need to become more feminine, you know, like... Be, be okay with the girls getting away with anything. And society tries to label guys like us as toxically masculine. Whenever we try to control women a bit or we try to promote a certain idea of masculinity, especially if it's traditional masculinity, they label us as toxically masculine, right? And they see us as a danger, as a threat to society. And they promote instead those liberal ideas of just uh, either gay stuff or ultra libertarian um, ideologies of like how a couple should be. So for example, uh, the guy who stays at home, like a stay at home dad, and then you have the girl who who is the breadwinner. 
or you stuff like that, right? Where the 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 whole roles are reversed, and you see a bunch of uh, divorces nowadays. Like the you know the number of divorces has completely increased, and everything is fucked up these days. And even on TV or when you watch Netflix, you can't open a TV show or a movie nowadays without having this woke cultural stuff getting in your face, right? You're always going to have some... And I'm not against LGBT, the LGBT movement. They do whatever they want, you know? Like, I don't care. You know, I have plenty of friends who are gay. I have plenty of friends who are LGBT or whatever. And they do whatever they want, you know? If, if you like women, if you like guys, that that's fine, you know? What it, What is not fine is that they try to also... Um, like they, they try to promote these ideas to kids, first of all, and, uh, they label us as the ones being wrong, right? And they try to demonize this whole traditional masculinity type of thing. So that's, that's the main thing. That's what I'm against. Anybody does whatever he wants, but at the end of the day, don't try to label us as toxically masculine where you are not doing any good for society as well, most of the time. I respect what you're doing, but you're not necessarily doing good. Now, you're free to do whatever, but yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Now, so society tries to feminize you, and that's why you see a lot of feminine men nowadays, or you see a lot of guys who can't really embody this strong masculine frame, and they lose their frame with women, and they're unable to maintain a certain polarity in their relationship because polarity is super important the more masculine you are the more feminine she's going to be and the more feminine you are the more masculine she's going to be with you as well so when you tap into your masculine and you fully embody that women are going to sense it and they're going to be able to fully tap into their feminine as well with you now these days i'm getting a lot of messages from guys who are losing their girl and the main reason why is because they these guys start to act in a feminine way in with a feminine frame and their frames all messed up and so that's why the women leave most of the time so today i'm going to give you the key to having a good healthy relationship with women because truthfully you should never lose a girl like having a, gr a girl dump you you might get rid of her yourself because maybe you want to move on or something like that, or maybe she's not the right fit, or you don't have the right, the, the same values long term. But she should never like dump you or cheat on you most of the time if you've set the right frames and boundaries. So the, the, the cheating and the stuff like that happens to guys who usually have a weak frame with women and who are not very discerning with them. Now, all the girls I've spoken to, all my past girlfriends, all, all my female friends, all the girls that are beautiful and sexy and, and hot that I've been in contact with, apart from all the blue-haired feminist types, they're going, to, they're going to want a masculine frame in a man. Okay, That's what they naturally desire. Now, some girls are not going to assume that. They're going to be a bit brainwashed by feminism and they're going to tell you, oh, no, it's okay, blah, blah, blah. But what they say they want versus what they actually want is two different things. And I truly believe that even the most hardcore feminist girl, if she's straight, if she is into guys, well, she will still enjoy this dominant masculine frame in a man, especially in bed, for example. In bed, 99% of girls want a guy who's dominant and they want to submit to a guy. And at the end of the day, nature has made us this way. We are made to penetrate the woman. And same thing with your frame. You have to penetrate her with your frame. And she submits to your frame. And she's the one being influenced more than you do. Right? So it all comes down to the art of becoming a real man. A lot of guys want tips and tricks and gimmicks and stuff like that. But there's no way of getting past the hard work. Because you'll never find fulfillment in a woman. You have to fulfill yourself with your own deeds. Right? You have to do things that will make you proud of yourself. And you need to stop getting pleasure from all the things that you haven't worked for or all the cheap dopamine, like video games, 
porn, drugs, alcohol, food, too much Netflix, too much social media. All these things are destroying your masculine frame if you're uh, doing them over and over and you're just doing that too much. If you're doing that too much, that's going to destroy your willpower as a man. And so you have to reduce and eliminate these bad habits and you have to get into habits that are going to make you more powerful as a man. Like, for example, learning new skills, working out, approaching actual women in real life, networking with other cool men, growing your business, making money. All these things are going to make you more powerful and are going to set the right frame, right? So you have to work on the right things first, your physical fitness, right? You have to be within minimum 10 to 15 body fat. This is me, like, this is a photo of me a few weeks ago. And I'm, I'm, I'm okay, you know, my, my shape is okay. I can do a lot better. It was Ramadan, actually. Um, so I was fasting most of the day because I, I, I did Ramadan, actually, this year. I tried it. Um, it wasn't that hard. I actually went to the gym even, like, I, I wasn't eating at all during the day. And not, not even just eating, not drinking any water at, at all as well. So not drinking any water, not eating anything till 8 p.m. And I was still going to the gym at noon. It was hard. It was hard to not eat anything, but I still did it. And one thing is, yeah, the first thing you need to work on is your physical fitness, your physique, and maintaining a certain body fat. You don't want to be uh, having having some body fat and, 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 and be over your natural body fat. Now, another thing is combat ability, like sparring, uh, going to some boxing gym, going to some martial arts class and really practicing martial arts because that's going to help you also with your masculine frame because beyond like being able to defend yourself and protect your girl or your family or your loved ones, this is also going to teach you a lot of discipline stuff and it's going to build you up as a guy, right? You're going to get humbled at the gym, but this will truly teach you a lot about yourself and about life. Now, another thing is your style, your look, your smell, your grooming. Like most guys are cock blocking themselves. They don't have the right grooming. They don't have the right style. They don't write, they, they, you know, they kind of suck in terms of their uh, appearance. And so you need to really work on your appearance as well. And then obviously uh, working on your business, working on uh, improving yourself when it comes to making money, making sales, et cetera. And having a brotherhood, a network, this is very, very important too. You need to have guys that are like-minded, that are visionaries, that are ambitious, with whom you can have fruitful long-term relationship. Maybe build businesses with them, collaborate with them, exchange ideas about how life works, how money works, all these things, right? And a strong frame actually comes from having a strong internal locus of control. When you have a strong locus of control, you usually have a strong frame. Now, what a strong internal locus of control means is that you take ownership for everything in your life. You don't blame other people or society or the government or your upbringing for what happens to you. You take responsibility. If something happens, it is your fault and you make things happen and you're 100% in control of your destiny. No one else. It doesn't matter if you've been traumatized when you were a kid. It doesn't matter if you've been raped or whatever. It doesn't matter if you've been abused. Th that shit doesn't matter. You know, what matters is that right now you decide that you're going to make things happen. You're going to decide for your destiny and you get what you deserve and you just claim it okay you don't wait for things to happen to you you just claim it and so when you have that strong internal locus of control when you truly believe that everything that happens in your life is 100 percent in your control and that you take ownership for everything you start taking the right this the, the right path you start making the right decisions and engaging in the right behaviors that are going to lead to success long term so when you dial all these things you actually become more of a man. You actually become more attractive to women and you can maintain a certain masculine frame with women. Now, a man with a strong masculine frame is not just a partner or lover. It's also a leader and a guide. You have to set the tone and the direction for the relationship. Okay, You have to provide stability. You have to reconfort her. 
You have to provide security and, and inspire trust in her and respect. All these things are super important. And so you have to, to be a great leader. And to be a great leader, you have to lead yourself first. You can't be a great leader if you don't lead yourself first. You know, there's no bad followers. There's only bad leaders in the world. Okay, remember that. There's no bad followers. There's only bad leaders. So learn to lead yourself first. And then when you learn how to lead yourself the right way, you're going to be able to lead others more effectively. Now, maintaining a masculine frame in a relationship is about being authentically masculine. It's not about copying some guru or some being some wannabe Andrew Tate in the relationship. It's not about trying to just take what you learned from this red pill book or this red pill guru and try to copy exactly what the book says or what the guru says by the letter. It's about holding on to your authentic self, but also to timeless masculine principles of stoicism, of accountability, of assertiveness, of purpose. Um, and it's not about being overly controlling as well. We're going to talk about that later in the video. Um, but you don't want to copy guys who say something on the internet. If a guy says something on the internet, like for example, oh, I don't let my girl go out at all. She doesn't have friends at all. And she doesn't go out without me. Well, you might hear that and you might say, okay, yeah, I'm going to do that in my relationship. I'm not going to let my girl go out at all. And she's just going to be a prisoner in my house, right? And then what happens is the girl senses that it's not really yourself and you're not being authentic. And she feels like, yeah, you're just being influenced by some guru online, right? So that's what happens. Now, having this authentic masculine frame comes from having a masculine mindset, like you need to value action over inaction. You need to value courage over fear. You need to value responsibility over passivity, right? And all these things are going to help you fuel this masculine frame of yours, right? Now, another thing in relationship is you need to maintain a certain negotiating power. What I mean by that is, you know, there's an, a good book by Trump, uh, The Art of the Deal by Donald Trump. And he says, you know, you can't win any negotiation if you're not able to walk away, okay? You can't negotiate if you're not willing to walk away. And this is the, the number one rule of frame control is you need to have enough respect for yourself and your values and you need to have enough uh, discernment to be able to walk away if someone doesn't respect you or if someone tries to just... Uh, uh, tries to go against what you're looking for, right? So a lot of girls are going to give you shit in a relationship. A lot of girls are going to test you, give you some shit. And a lot of girls are going to disrespect you sometimes. And if you let them and you let them walk over you, then that's how they win. And that's how you become kind of submitted to them. You become subservient and you lose the frame. You have to show a woman that you're able to walk away, that you don't necessarily need her, and that if she crosses a certain boundary, you're not going to be pussy whipped and you're not going to bitch out and, and just uh, uh, supplicate to her. You're going to let her know that if that happens again, then sorry, but you can't be with her anymore. And respect in a relationship comes from both fear and admiration. She needs to fear that she could lose you, but she needs to also admire who you are as a man, admire, you know, the, the way you take action in life, the way you conduct yourself, your, your, she admires the way you stay true to your values, etc. right? So respect comes from admiration and fear. And if she doesn't fear losing you at all, if, if she, if she knows that you're not going to walk away, even if she crosses a boundary, then that's how she loses respect. And that's how you allow her to walk all over you. Now, another thing is you never want to let a chick change your values or make you drift off your goals. A lot of girls are going to try to distract you, are going to try to make you uh, compromise yourself and who you are. And you don't want to do that. Don't compromise your goal for a girl. Okay, never. Never compromise who you are and never compromise what you want in life 
and what you want to accomplish for a woman. You want to stick to your goals, stick to who you are. Either she follows along the journey or on to the next. No problem. There's going to be thousands of other girls who are going to be the right fit. Okay. So that's one of the backbones of having a strong frame is having enough self-respect to not tolerate disrespectful behaviors and to be able to walk away when you need to. Right. Now, also, a lot of guys lose frame in the relationship because they concede to every demand. Like a girl tells you, oh, I'm going to go to my f with my female friends to Ibiza this summer. Oh, I'm going to go to the club this weekend. Oh, um, stay with me. Don't go to the gym. Uh, you know, I I'm not feeling good. Like, don't go to the gym, blah, blah, blah. And so a girl is going to try to drift you off your goals and is going to try to test your boundaries to see what she can get away with. Now, if you let her get away with anything, if you let her drink every weekend with her girlfriends, go to parties, go to uh, travel with her girls, especially if all her friends are single and all her friends are actively on the dating market looking to date, then if you let her go with her friends all the time, um, then there's a high chance either she's going to cheat on you or she's going to make bad decisions. So... You have to set some boundaries and let her know what you're willing to tolerate. Uh, that's why you have to set the right frames from the beginning. Okay, because the frame you set in the beginning is going to set the tone for the rest of the relationship. Now, most men in a relationship will go through a slow process of agreeing to their girlfriends or their, their wife's endless requests. And it's always, it, it always starts small. It's a, it's a small, it's a small series of small concessions that leads to the guy becoming more and more beta and the guy becoming less and less in control of the relationship. And it starts very small. Like, for example, so for example, she asks you if she can go for a weekend with her girlfriends and then you say yes. And then she goes to a one month trip in Bali with, uh, with her girlfriends or she goes to Vegas. And then maybe she tells you that she wants to become vegan and that you should become vegan with her. And then maybe she tells you that uh, you should stop going to the gym because you spend too much time working out. And then maybe she tells you that um, you should do X, Y, Z things for her because uh, that's how it should be. And like it starts with, you know, small concessions, but then it builds up to bigger and bigger things and if you let her get away with small things and you gradually you know let her get away with bigger things that's when the problem starts right so in a relationship you have to set firm rules and i like to say that you need to set kind of an islamic scent to your relationship now i come from a muslim background so i know exactly what i'm talking about and in Muslim relationships, there's a very strong frame because the book, the Quran, says it. Like, it, it tells you exactly how a relationship should be conducted. So the girl abides by it and the guy abides by it. Um, but yourself, if you're Christian or Jewish or if you're uh, an atheist or whatever, still, I think it's very useful to have rules and set kind of this, I say Islamic, but just like having this th those rules that are just not to be crossed basically now you don't want to take it too far i saw this tweet the other day uh from a guy i know uh you he said like you send your girl to the club i send mine to the mosque we're not the same right now it's not like oh allah Akbar, you need to stay at the house and you don't do anything and you can't you can't even show your face and whatever like it's not about that it's not about being overly controlling actually being overly controlling can truly hurt the relationship i'm not saying like you need to be super controlling and not let her do anything etc of course like she's a woman she makes her own decisions if you trust her and if there's a relationship of trust between you and she has the right values and you you you, you screened her for the right qualities, then she should not be engaging in behaviors that would ruin the relationship. Like, for example, talking to a bunch of other guys or going to the club every weekend without you. Um, but still, like, you want to set some boundaries. Now, if a woman is obsessed with you, too much control is unnecessary, to be honest. Like, it's in your best interest to allow the significance of her character to reveal itself right? You want a relationship where there's true devotion, where there's true admiration, 
uh, where there's true attraction. Like she's not doing things because you told her to. You, she's doing things because she truly respects you and admires you. And she loves the relationship so much that she wouldn't even allow herself to get into those situations. And at the end of the day, her character under pressure reveals who you're in bed with. So don't be too over controlling. Don't be like a wannabe Andrew Tate or a guy that, that is too red pill. But at the same time, set some boundaries. Let her know what you appreciate, what you don't appreciate. Let her know what, uh, what your thoughts are and how you think it should be. And then see how she behaves. See how she, con she conducts herself, right? Now, some rules you can set in a relationship is, for example, not having some new male friends besides like some work colleagues or whatever. Even work colleagues can be, can be dangerous if she starts seeing them after work or whatever. Um, ideally, no men in her social media. She's not following a bunch of guys and no provocative pictures or videos on social media. That's one of the rules, for example, that you could set. Uh, if, a, if a man tries to talk to her for romantic purposes, she must report immediately. She must tell you like, hey, this guy tried to flirt, flirt with me. I'm just letting you know, like I didn't let him, I blocked him, whatever. And she tells you, right? She reports. She doesn't uh, keep those uh, romantic, I mean, not romantic, but she doesn't keep those things as a secret. Like she tells you when a guy tries to flirt or she tells you when a guy, when a guy tries to do something with her, uh, she, she lets you know or she blocks the attempt, right, directly. Also, one rule is that she should not be in nightclubs without you or without like a trusted friend that, that you know, either a female friend that you really trust or a male friend of yours that could protect her and, uh, and, and be with her just in case, right? Also, she should never start an argument in social settings. She should never undermine your, your power in front of your friends. Instead, she should support you and, and, and all of that. And if something happens or if she disagrees, if she disagrees with you, she should let you know in private first, not in public, especially if she doesn't know the people. If it's not like a close circle, she shouldn't undermine your power and argue with you, etc. Imagine you're in, a, in an important sales meeting, in an important business meeting, and you bring your girlfriend to the meeting and she starts arguing with you and starts like going against your frame in front of prospects or in front of potential uh, partners. Well, that's not a good look, right? So these are uh, frames you could set, right? And she should be like that anyways. Like honestly, like a girl that's truly high quality, she should know these things already. And if she respects you and the relationship and she wants to make it work, she should be doing that anyway. Now, I remember, you know, I was talking to a girl and she said, uh, this is one of my girls that I was dating. You know, this, this is one of my girls. I was dating her and she told me, uh, hey, Limo, my friend invited me to a party. She wants us to go drink and go to the club. And what I told her is I told her, honestly, I don't want you to go. Like, I, I was joking with her. I said, no, it's haram. Like, don't go. Right. I was just joking with her. But at the same time, like, yeah, honestly, like, I would prefer you stay home. So here's an example. I was talking to this girl and this girl told me that she was invited to a birthday party to a place and she was with a guy that she mentioned once. She mentioned this guy called Egor that she mentioned and he's apparently a co-worker who plays poker, etc. and who organizes parties, right? And she mentioned him a couple times, but uh, I told her to not talk with him much because she told me that he was always trying to he always tried to flirt with her. So I told him like, hey, you should avoid this guy, right? And so now she's telling me that she's going to a party where this guy is gonna be. And she told me, no, I'm just gonna use him for entrance. As you can see the first screenshot at the bottom, she said, I'm only gonna use him for entrance. And he's still jealous of your handsomeness. And and so then I said, uh, uh, I said, uh, yeah. And then she said to me, this is all male games. So that's what she told me on the second screenshot. And so then I said, look, it's haram, don't go. And said, then, then she said, fine, I won't go. And obviously I'm joking when I say it's haram and stuff because we're joking about, about this. But at the same time, she didn't go, you know? So what I'm telling you is you want to set some boundaries. You want to tell her what you honestly like and dislike and what you don't, don't want her to do. And if she respects you, then she's not going to do it.
right? If she really values the relationship. Now, no matter what happens, you have to remain calm. As a man, it's essential to stay calm and be assertive and never resort to aggression or bullying or losing your temper. Even if a girl crosses your boundaries, be calm, be stoic, and take rational action. So don't, no need to yell at her or be aggressive. Just say, fine. Apparently, you don't respect the relationship. Then bye. We're not going to be together anymore. I don't want to associate with you anymore. And you can just be very calm and just cut things, right? Straight. You don't need to be aggressive, etc. Because the moment you get too emotional, that's when you start tapping into your feminine. If you are more emotional than her, then by definition, you become more feminine than her. You have to become stoic. You have to become like a rock, right? Um, so that's one thing. And embrace your role as the leader. You're the leader in the relationship. So you pay the bills. You protect her. You give her tasks to make her feel important. Be the leader. It's like being the leader of a company. You make sure your people are taken care of. You give them the right tasks. You set the right expectations. You pay them on time. You protect them. You give them insurance and, and all of that. Being a leader of a relationship is like being a leader of a team, of a company. It's, a, it's, a, it's something you need to actively do. And it's your role as the guy in the relationship. Don't uh, wait for the girl to do that. Don't let the girl be the one paying your bills and, and, and giving you tasks to do, like the, the honey-do list or whatever. Don't let the girl do that. You do that, right? Now, one thing is, if you want to learn more about all these things, we have a free school community called Dating Systems, and it's free. Uh, there's plenty of content. There's hours and hours of training, and we have a great community. You can ask some questions there, and it's, it's great. Now, if you want to accelerate your journey and you truly want to get to the next level, you want to get one to three dates a week within the next few weeks, or you want to get an amazing girlfriend within the next few weeks, then we have a premium community called Dating Systems Premium where you can have access to all my premium content. You have access to one weekly Q&A call with myself. You can ask all your questions directly. And it's a thriving community. Like we have guys who are super successful in it. And this is the best place if you want to get started. And then we also have uh, my mentoring program. And this is my mentoring program where we have two calls per week together. Uh, you can have a private Telegram uh, chat with me where we can talk one-on-one -on -one every day. You can send me voice notes. You can send me screenshots of your conversations. I help you really personally one-on-one -on -one, uh, every single day whenever you need to. And um, this is the best program if you truly want to get there faster and you want to benefit from one-on-one uh, -on -one help and you want to have those two calls per week instead of just one where I can truly help you personally and show you everything. And this will guarantee that you get there much, much faster. So that's pretty much it. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you on the next. Don't forget to drop a like, drop a comment, uh, subscribe, and I'll see you soon.